Okay, welcome back. <laughs> um All right, let's uh well I left first of all to do more of an open floor. Um does anyone have any other questions anyone would like to ask the party or Bree or anyone? I have a question for Siegfried. I have a question is, for which everybody. Is, which is who who does Siegfried believe is the biggest threat out of the party? If, if, if say, everyone were to turn, who would he be most, like, concerned about turning? I mean, Ariston, for just strictly strength reasons, he, like, he's Valor. super powerful compared, you know, like, in Siegfried's eyes. And I think Fawn, for intellect reasons, he's afraid of that brain. Like, respectively, he thinks Fawn is smarter, uh, Ariston is stronger, but he has them beat as an overall package. That's that's his mind. Ah, ah, nice, nice. Yeah. I've, that's exactly listen, the answer I wanted. Bro, Bromel's character is almost always the top of my hit list. If, if anybody... Yeah, oh, yeah, has, you just if, always get down, Just, yeah, no. The funny thing is, I usually nerf my characters. <laughs> I've been... Dude, I've been... I did the whole math to try and figure out, like... Is this magic item asking Bree to get too strong for him to have? And is it just a magical sword? Yep. It's all it is. Yep. And, um, I thought, I thought you were going to bring up your, your kill list of the party. The fact that, <laughs> yeah. the fact that you always create a kill list of the party. I mean, Fun, Maki, Siegfried. Actually, without Ariel on the party, um, Fun, Ariel, Maki, Siegfried, Charlotte. Mm. I'm the least threatening. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're the you're, one you're his, last. You're his. You're his best friend. He would. He doesn't want to fight you. Uh, to be fair, if everyone else was dead, Charlotte would just go. Yeah, okay, and just. Look, look. You want to just have okay. Charlotte be fine with it? You kill Maki first. Honestly, okay, you, all you have to do is be like, in this kill list, it's Maki. <laughs> you want to do it? Should be like a little bit, a little bit, yes. Um, okay, Qu question for question for everybody. Yeah. Obviously, Hazel, you've only had one session. Um, but what has been everybody's like individual favorite non-character moment? Like a moment that hasn't been exclusively by like one character or another. Just like your favorite, like. Oh man, there was this one thing that happened. It was great. Maybe like uh, you know, just just us going to the beach, or something like. That. Oh, like a general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's been your What's been your favorite thing? What's yours, Chris? Yeah, lead it on. Yeah, yeah, because we we'll need an example here. Um, honestly, my favorite so far has been um going to the mines. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that really it let everybody shine equally, and I think like everybody has something to contribute. Um, I loved just the the end of that arc where it just it was like literally an entire session of Siegfried like interrogating everybody all the nights. <laughs> it was great. I loved it, I uh, and then great. getting to like go around and stealth assassinate people was great. And also Billy, do I need to say any more? Billy, <laughs> I, think, I, think that, I think that's my favorite. Like. Arc. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, I have like two or three like big portions that I really really enjoyed. I really enjoy uh the very slow friendship develop developing between uh Charlotte and Fawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I love the the uh bets that have happened, and then I love. The god, all the goddamn death omens that happened. Yes. In such a short amount of time, one of them done by Fawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, two of them are Maki's. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. God. Every time I hear Fawn's name, I just want to say like, like you just said, fuck you, and I just want to be like, so fucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's a ship name. Yeah. Jeez, that is a ship name. Yeah. Um, her on. Um. 
<laughs> Honestly, the one that Chris said is pretty up there. Um, that whole little little sequence too. At first, I was like really confused, like, why are we talking to these people? I must have missed it or something. And then when you guys told, I was like, oh, I can get behind that. That sounds fun. Yeah. Um. So inter- yeah, interrogating the three of them, even though I had my choice pretty early on. Um, yeah, I think we all did. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That, that was pretty up there. Um, yeah. No. No. I think that 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 was it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, at least on my side, I actually really enjoyed the whole vacation arc. I really love beach arcs. I actually love how everything came together for that. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're like, narc. I know, right? <laughs> Goddamn narc. But like... The old Thon was a narc. I know. <laughs> this whole time. It's a narc. It's sudden and instant betrayal of Thon. He won all of us. After, get, after getting you, like... Okay, so... Hazel, for reference, NARC membership is actually just, like, basically a higher package that you're able to get at a hotel. Yeah, Fon's a, Fon's a NARC membership. So, um, a, as, a, so as a prince, dude, as a prince on the coastal city, I basically had, like, a higher access to that hotel. Okay. Yeah. So, because yeah. Nark and Mother of Pearl are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. so that that was where it started, and very slowly we've just been like collecting narks. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel I think Anthony. It's, I, think it's, I think it's only. I think it's only Ariel, Aris, and Lucky. Charlotte who aren't narks yet. Yeah. Who, luck, knows? yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows when we might shift? Like who knows? It's terrifying. Know. Every session you're terrified. Like you know, <laughs> I might narc. narc. It's, it's, it's a terrifying thought of, like, I might narc next. Mm, mm, I know, mm, right? Mm, I, I, I'm like, you're going Shall I be the snitch that gets the stitch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you've had to be you, already threw, room. you already threw poor Colonel Anthony down. <laughs> so, I threw him at you. Also, oh, yeah. I know he'd be fine. You. <laughs> From my uh, master, um, I have two favorite moments. Uh, one, when y'all were opening the box. Mm. Ah. Was yeah, that that was the one I was oh, going to mention. I forgot about the box. I, I love the box. I that, that was the one I was going to mention was the box. That was a great commutative moment between the group, and it was one of the first, like, real everyone is involved somehow kind of thing. Yep. Do what, Haran? I wasn't really that. I mean, you cast one or two spells. Yeah, you were... You were helping you us figure out the thing. I wasn't really a caster then, so I couldn't, like, do you much. You were googly-eyed, therefore you were part of it. You were in the room. <laughs> I was like, you were in the room. Ariston, Ariston and Siegfried were, were both just there. No. Yeah, like, no. Uh, <laughs> I think I just like to picture we were both just like, playing cards in the background as they're doing <laughs> I declare war. <laughs> uh, in terms of fights, I think my favorite fight and favorite... Um, like trial I've done for y'all is the latest one with Gilbert Delcroy mm. um, and the way that all went down um, I, I think that was a really interesting fight mechanic and I really enjoyed doing that and playing mm. around with that I don't know what y'all's favorite fight was um, but that was that one that was a really good one uh, by far that was such a a cool just because like we had to work around focusing not on him but everything else as well as being careful of the people that we could hurt and the time limit mm -hmm. like it was a lot of shit but it was all shit that made sense in the moment mm -hmm. so in lieu of that i actually mainly because like i didn't really have much to do in that fight because i couldn't really do much in that fight but my favorite fight that we've done is actually the um when we first fought the shadows um like no 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 in in the uh in the um ballroom yeah oh, that, that was another one i was gonna bring up yeah because the amount of light play and like using the light to basically remove their advantage yeah i keep forgetting all this shit. <laughs> and and it's about this, like narratively at least for me and as fawn it was more important than it was for gilbert yeah Especially finding your mom's neck. I, mm -hmm. 
the only reason I wouldn't put the Gilbert fight as like my favorite is because by the time I was done getting, you know, we're fighting these little blood letter things, I was like, I want to kill him so badly, and then he disappeared. I was like, no! <laughs> I want to put him in his ass. But all would it be so much more satisfying when he reappears and you get to do Listen, it all over again? No, he comes back, he's dead. Out of Listen, can I, I couldn't do it. I, couldn't, I was like, no. Can I, can, I just, I can I just say real quick? Aerison got turned into a bunny that fight, and that was the fucking funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> he didn't want you wanted to be a uh, bunny for the rest of the game. Oh, dude, I, I was so, so down. down. All right, uh, so down. So that we can include Hazel into the discussion from the last, um, from the last session. What was like a good moment that you noticed while observing everyone? Um, my favorite moment of last session was Fawn and his sister. I'm still not too good with names, but that shit broke my heart. Oh, June. June. That's, oh, June. Yeah, June. Uh, You're the only one that's ever treated me as a princess, big brother. I, I bet everyone in the party from all over the house fucking cried. Nobody knew why, but we all did. Oh, it's your time. So... During that scene was playing, I actually had a Korean drama OSC playing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I'm, I am actually totally in that scene right now. <laughs> um, Like, that was just a perfect culmination mm -hmm. of a lot of different mm -hmm. things and a lot of different cool. character moments. And it was just so, so emotional. So mm -hmm. good. With me not mowing much about the character, that scene absolutely broke my heart. Yeah. But that kind of tells you, like, basically all you need to know about their character dynamic. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy that took place. Very good scene. <laughs> yeah. um, I was happy with Ariel and Charlotte uh, and all their interactions together. The friends now. And all that. They are very <laughs> good friends. I, I actually love how Charlotte basically took her under her wing almost immediately. <laughs> this is <laughs> my <laughs> I like this. <laughs> when you put two mom friends together. Yeah, it's it's like you know, you get Charlotte mom. took Ariel under her wing, and then the whole time Maddie was explaining things that happened in the past to give context to things that we were saying. <laughs> I, like, okay, I respect it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. In character, Charlotte absolutely was also explaining, just not as good because <laughs> Charlotte can't. Oh no, of course not. Very goodly. All right. So will. Oh. Uh... Yeah, most of the moments I would consider have been mentioned. However, before the shadow fight, the everyone before and after the first shadow fight, I think were really good. The entire ballroom scenes with everyone. Mm -hmm. Big to see how everyone interacted with, I guess, all these other leaders. We will eventually possibly have to deal with at some point seeing how everyone else would have handled these situations and get to know about other people's perspectives on certain matters mm -hmm. and it was even though even if it was most bored. safe <laughs> oh, oh goodness bored. speaking of, of <laughs> i love bored so much oh he's, he's great. amazing speaking great. of the before and after the gala can we talk about the fact that y'all were gonna break into our, our little girl's gifts to see what the fuck that cloak was about. Okay, is that a, okay? No, no, no. I, okay, I wonder about it all the time. Is that discussion canon? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If that discussion is canon, the, yes. Canon, but they also didn't do it. They do it though. Was the yeah. Thing. First of all, power. Would you like me to tell you? The <laughs> no. No, no, no. 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 We, we will figure it out in play. We will figure it out in play. God damn it, Bree. Hazel yeah. <laughs> said Bree DM me. Uh, so, uh, what, what, are, what are the gifts we were told was a, a uh, what, what was it called? It's a cloak of snake, snakeskin cloak? It's a snakeskin snake skin. cloak. Yeah. And, Given and by your, the Yon T count. Yes. Yeah. And the uh, the discussion being had was, is it made from one of the Yon T? Yeah, or is it is made it from an actual Yon T? Now that's important because <laughs> you must figure, you must know how Yon T treat their dead. So, uh, the the only one who knew 
any bit about that was was Maki, and he was very concerned. And then when he revealed why he was concerned, everyone else also got a little bit. Well, <laughs> Maki and Thawne at the same time. I'm the one who brought it up. Yeah. Is it, yeah. is it like a dead body in that in that thing? And so they were gonna go un unwrap the gift so that Maki could get a closer look at it. And mm -hmm. it was a legitimate plan for a while before yeah. they were like, maybe this is not a great idea. I like, think Fawn had to Fawn Fawn left and then just, and just Maki and Eris and we're like, maybe no no we can't, but Look, maybe. Just, listen, I think I left it later. So I, think in I think this if world, Big Breed was there, they would have done it. In this world, when Yanti die, there is no waste. Um, so they don't bury or burn their dead like other uh, races might. Um, they eat their dead. Mm -hmm. And then he shed skin, and that is made into a family cloak or family cape. Um, <clears throat> so, the question was, did he just give them some family's cloak? So, um... Which, yeah, I, which I want to leave undiscovered, personally. Yes. Yes. I want us to never find out, but I want us to always come very close to finding out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want it to be teased. As many Actually, no, I, look, we're, we're very close, and we get interrupted by something. Actually, uh, Bree. I want it to be like nothing we could have figured out. Bree, th that actually like leads to a question here. Because of how nothing goes to waste, um, how is brain matter handled? Because is there like a higher risk of prions disease within the UNT community? Um, so basically how the Yonti would handle all of it is they eat everything, any flesh, any meat, um, but skin is not eaten. Um, so like all the scales and all of the skin. Um, and then what's in the head is not eaten. Okay, so they're, that... they're, they're not risking the whole like getting mad cow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, in the head, the head is viewed as, um, like your, your humanity, mm -hmm. I suppose, is, if, if we're lacking of a better term, because they're not human, and they don't want to be human, but like, the, the sentientness, I suppose? Their soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. So like, everything else is, is bestial, it's primal, and that's why they honor, um, them in that way, it is by honoring that bestial part, but the brain and the tongue that you use to speak and the eyes that you use to see, that's a very um, sacred thing to, to um, your humanity, for lack of a better term once again. Mm -hmm. um, so those things would just kind of be placed in an urn or a jar and then, you know, embalmed pretty much. So, or uh, covered up in incense and uh, oils and things like that to kind of preserve those things like wet specimens is there any other questions that everyone would like to direct to the group or questions? i i have one does anyone have any questions about the the world or the history or the cultures or anything uh delisian majestican precipitation which doesn't come up a lot but precipitation is a is a place. Yigdwini, Omen. Omen doesn't come up a lot either. Uh, I prefer to learn that stuff, like, during play. I was going to say, my, yeah. the only thing I would say for that is I'd honestly love for you to do more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, like, I'm aware that all these exist, and I'm, I mean, I'm staring at the map right now. I know where they are. But until they come up in, in play, and not just, like, oh, this place, da 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 da, da until it's, like, something more personal they gonna affect me in any way i don't really have any thoughts on them i, like, I really want to go to uskum because that sounds fucking awesome me too. honestly mm -hmm. yeah but um, i don't know how we're gonna get I, there I also, or, or why in, i also in, in all really fairness, charlotte does, does, does like, charlotte wants you guys to go to uskum and she also wants to hell that you guys never have to mm -hmm. oh, dude literally all she ever has to do is even hint to eris and that she wants to go and let's go she, she would like so y'all did find that that keg of those two kegs of uh, black powder. Yeah. That was, yeah. Malaysia, right? Yeah, that's what, what? so. Principally, I was gonna I was gonna say real quick. Uh, like, 
the, the only place I want to go to are Uskum, and then I also I just I want to have like something to make us go east, because I want to obviously want to go to to the, to Elizir people, but I also like I want to go see the Ingtwini. I know Fawn would really want to probably, uh, mm -hmm. but I'd love to do like undercover shit. Uh, and then yeah, I would I would like to go to Presepalacia, um, and well, just see. It would actually be really easy for Fawn to uh, enter Igdwini lands without being noticed, because he hasn't been there for years. Oh, question real quick: Does Fawn still do the the fox thing? I'm assuming this still happens. You just don't. Oh no, I don't. I don't say it anymore. But uh. Hazel, for your reference, every time he casts a spell, a he gets fox ears and a fox tail, uh, are equal to the level of the spell that he casts. Okay. The tail, not the ears, right? Yeah. I was hoping. <laughs> no, the tail. Like no, no, no. Like spirit, like tail. spiritual no, ears get bigger. Fox. Yeah, like spiritual, like sp uh, like. See through ghostly fox ears. Okay. Um, his eyes actually turn fox like, and then about so right now he can only cast like what third level spells. He can get mm -hmm. up to three fox tails at the moment. All right. So it technically happens. Um, the way I've been playing it is if he uses subtle spell, that doesn't appear. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a pretty dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, uh, he what? doesn't really need to cast. Like, if he's going to cast a spell, he's going to cast a spell. But if it's a psionic thing, then it's a psionic thing. It's not a... It's not a fox thing. Alright. I okay. gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, question for Chris. Mm -hmm. What is, as the only other person who's not a caster in the... Uh, how does Ariston feel about magic in general? So, um, every, every Elizir is able to cast spells. Um, mm -hmm. gusts and gusts of wind. Um, because of the, the, the traditional, you know, story is that, um, the, the gods, when the priest presents the, the baby to the gods, the gods bless them with, you know, these powers. Uh, and the tattoo is like a manifestation, the representation of that. Um, which is why whenever he casts any of those spells, it has to be from his right arm. I think I made a joke about it last session, I think. Um, uh, his, his, the tattoo always glows whenever that happens. Um, mm -hmm. So there's always like that base level. Um, but then there are the closest things like a, a magical academy that they have in... Uh, in, in Zarya, which is the capital city of the Lazir, um, is a bard's college. It's called the the Muse College, and it's a it's a scholarly place. Um, but aside from that, like their other primary spellcasters would be sorcerers and uh, priests, clerics. Um, Arison's view of magic is, you know. First off, he has a he has a like he doesn't. The, the concept that like a normal person can't innately cast any spell is weird to him because mm -hmm. to him like everybody should be able to um but then also like he at first he didn't care about magic at all like at all um to me it was a, it was a thing and it was there for those who basically <laughs> it was there for those who couldn't fight who are basically too weak to to hold up. Um, it, he had no real interest in it. Uh, as time has progressed, um, and I'll have more to say on it later when I question, I know it's almost going to come up, comes up. Um, over time has gone on, he's gotten a little more appreciation of it. And now he's definitely magic curious. Um, that's why he asked Monty <laughs> for, for, for help. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> kind of understanding how magic works by spell you will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> by spell you by spell you You're welcome. So, uh, he's he's um, 
He's, he's opened his mind a lot to it. So what you're um, saying is it's a twin spell. Uh, and he definitely... Uh. <laughs> Let me have it. I think, um... I, I think, like, he's seen the cool stuff like Fawn's been able to do, the cool stuff Maki's been able to do. Um, some of the cool stuff that Siegfried has been able to do. Um, but honestly, he is, like, seeing Charlotte cure all the kids was, like, for for, mm -hmm. for for lack of a better frame of, or lack of a better wording for it, uh, it was a spiritual experience. Like, it was, like, it was, like, mm -hmm. holy shit, that's what you could do with it. He still has the idea, like, if you have to fight with magic, why are you even fighting? But seeing that it could help someone, uh... It's definitely a lot more alluring to him than anything else. All right. So is that? that why he hates Maki? Did we talk about this already? Is that why he hates no. Maki? That, you see, that's, I that's... was waiting till he was finished to bring out. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking uh, about what he's going with Maki. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll bring it there. We'll bring it there. Will. As I was gonna say, I'm assuming yeah. Rommel has that like literally the very end. Actually, actually, no. I was. I actually never wrote out that, that question. Well, so. What? <laughs> really? Wow. All right. I didn't write mean, it I'm sorry. You mean a fan never throw that? Uh, a, a, fan, a fan. A fan never. <laughs> yeah. I like Harrison's because it really came out of no, out of, out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's oh, a good time to transfer it right, to. Yeah, why does Ariston dislike Maki as much so much? <laughs> um, so there's more stuff in backstory that I will not talk about. Uh, I'll talk about right. it when it when and if it ever comes up. Um, but it's a combination of a couple different things. Um, when ah, when okay, let me start off meta first. Okay, okay. We we're building characters for this game. I had a it had, had a character in mind, an incredibly specific character. I had his full backstory planned out. I had names for uh, his family members. I had like the exact little nuances of it. Um, and then we sat down to build characters. And Haran, or before before that, whatever. And Haran was like, oh, "I want to play a rogue." And I was like, "Fuck, that's what that character was." And I was like, well, maybe I can change him to a ranger. And I thought about it some more, and I'm like, no. Um, so I looked when I saw what the party comp was going to be, I decided, well, a paladin would make the most amount of sense. So then I started running a character uh, backstory for a paladin. Then it started being so edgy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything inherently wrong with edginess, it's just. That character never would have worked in this party. It'd be yep. a terrible, terrible match. Oh no, Fa Fawn would have immediately hated him. <laughs> it's just like, why the fuck? He's like, what's up, bro? They were like, no, bro, He's a he's a tiefling. He was a tiefling vengeance paladin. Jesus. Who was basically <laughs> ostracized by his father because he's the only tiefling in his family. Oh my god. Um, and I was like, this is, fuck this. It's like, literally, I was there, I, 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 I made that character, we had the, we had the talk, and I was like, okay, and then I'm talking about, okay, I'm switching over to this paladin character, I started making him, and a couple weeks later, I was like, okay, no, this really doesn't work. So I was there, like, a week or so left to make Ariston, and I was like, okay, uh, new character, uh, let's make his people, let's make him, make his personality, make all this shit. And I was like, but I don't have any relation to, to anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't have, like, why anybody would know. So, um, I, I, I made up why you guys would barely know him, mm -hmm. which is that like he's always out adventuring. Um, but then also, I was like, I want, uh, I want a bit of conflict in the party. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you guys a thing that says, hey, this is how uh, you guys, the people around you would perceive Eris. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to see who would pick up on that and play with that. Um, when we started playing, um, Maddie, I knew Maddie was not going to at all. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I figured... I got with googly eyes. Yeah, I figured, <laughs> the, three, I, 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 I figured the, the three of you guys 
might do something, and I was, I was paying attention to see who would do any sort of jab towards Arison, because like, the <laughs> second somebody does that, mm-hmm. I've been playing on that shit. And Will was the first. Really? Siegfried <laughs> made a couple comments, but he also warmed up. Uh, Fawn made one comment, I remember distinctly, one comment at the dinner table. Um, about pirates? But also... <laughs> yeah. Huh? About pirates? <laughs> but also kind of dropped it. Um, but uh, Will multiple, or Maki multiple times uh, men- like kind of digged at Ariston. Um, including, yeah. I, remember, I remember when um, when you guys sent uh, when you guys sent Maki and Charlotte to go and you know walk around the village. Yeah. And Charlotte's like, "Oh, should we go get Ariston?" And Maki's like, "What do we need that drunkard for?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. So because of that, I was immediately like, "Okay, I don't have any connections to anybody, but I know Ariston fucking hates this guy." <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Ericsson has been doing this since the beginning. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been it's been digs at him the entire time. Okay, um, I've always been doing it, whether you guys remember it or not. I've always been doing it. Uh, um, I'm, I'm actually surprised you guys didn't realize. I I honestly didn't. I, thought, I had no yeah. clue. I was too busy digging at Maki, you know. But I, Maki kind of. <laughs> <laughs> how Maki first received Ariston is like, all right, well, he's a drunk. And it's yeah. like, oh, he's not, okay, he's a capable more than drunk. Okay. Bit in the wrong. Um, to, to, to continue a little bit further, um, Ariston, because permission of the nobles like him, he doesn't like permission of the nobles. Um, he would have been very much cautious of Fawn. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Maki, it was it, it's a mixture of a couple things because like, you know, that was the meta reason why. Uh, for the like in character reason, it's as previously mentioned. Uh, if you can't like you know fight, why are you here? Uh, and to him, like Maki is like the weakest set of all of them. Even though I think it's Siegfried is the weakest strength wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah. Yeah, but like to him it's like Maki is this st- like okay. Fun had some abilities, some talents, and he is a you know he he I mean he's a noble, he's being sent here. Okay, whatever. Um <laughs> Siegfried is a bodyguard. Weird that he's here, he should be doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I really should be at the house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every time Maki goes out, I'm like, why the fuck are we sending this? But, <laughs> but Maki's the most egregious one. Maki's the most egregious one. He's like, what the flying fuck is a goddamn <laughs> Taylor doing here? What the fuck is he doing? He shouldn't even be here. He has no place here. Charlotte is literally the only person that he's like, yes, this person should be here. So, but like, funny enough, funny enough, funny enough, at least on my end of this, is like, for Fawn, he considers Maki to be more, like, in line of thoughts of what he's thinking. So he's like, hey, Maki, I actually can't do this, so why don't you go do this? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, uh, when you were complaining about Maki and the nobles and how you didn't want to like any of the nobles and all that, mm-hmm. my brain um, was like, yeah, because he's a, a bootlicker or, or an ass kisser. Um, but my Brown brain hazard. didn't think of them separately. My brain <laughs> provided me with the phrase, he's an ass kisser. <laughs> But the thing is, I mean, like, at, the, at the start of the game, thing. that is literally what Ariston was like. Yeah, no, this dude is is like, what the fuck is he doing here? He has no place being here. Um, Siegfried's first first idea of him was like, yeah, why is the tailor here? But he knows, uh, you know, he knows his pro- his yeah, Siegfried, for, for and stuff. So he yeah, gets Siegfried's it. like the only one who I, Siegfried and Lord Mim are the only two people who know that Maki makes poison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it, it makes sense. Um, Actually, to extend this to a viewer question, from everyone's initial ideas of fellow party members, how has their impression changed? Ooh, okay. Um, okay. who would like to start this? 
I, I will say just about Ariel real quick. Siegfried is, hasn't spoken to her yet. He's just like, why are we bringing this kid? Like, wh what is this kid coming back <laughs> with us for? He's very yeah, confused. That's fair. <laughs> He's yeah, like, why Ariel are we bringing her on? Like, all right, she got well. captured. She's not useful at all. Uh, <laughs> like, and then you guys gave her a cut of the money. Thank well, you. I mean, it's to be fair. To be fair, uh, like that—that's like an out of character choice. You yeah. guys didn't have to. I know, but that. The, I'm gonna the thing be is, we're not fight shitty. I didn't want to. We're, we're not shitty players. <laughs> I said we're not <laughs> shitty players. To be honest. Yeah. We're not shitty players, so we're gonna give you the Fine. money. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. In character, there's no reason why we should, and we probably wouldn't. But as we're now playing with us. Yes. It's the same reason we didn't give Yak the money. Yeah. Did anybody yeah. even be like, oh, Yak should get some of the money, too? No. No. Give a fuck about Yak. Yeah. No. Yak is under yeah. buy employment. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's your salary. job. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that's that's why we did that. Yeah. Um... Can I just say, I love the fact that Yak uh, is this fisherman, like, random commoner that fucking knows under common. Yeah. That, that... Got a pass. You know what? That actually... That actually brought me, it was just like, okay, cool, he knows a lot more languages than he knows off. But he still needs to learn high speech, so I can actually use him. <laughs> preferably at some point. I don't like that phrasing. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Uh, Haran, you had you started, can you, can you go ahead and... Yeah, yeah, so, um, that was your initial idea of Ariel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ariston, obviously, um, the things I heard, but Siegfried wouldn't mention those things. He's not going to make an enemy right off the bat for no reason. Fair. So, And then he saw um, pretty early on, I don't remember the first time I saw you fighting something. Was it in the house? Was that the first time, in, like, during campaign I would have saw you fight? Yeah. It was, it was in the it was in the tunnels. Fighting the, the rats. Yeah, it would have been in the tunnels. The, the rats, then the willow. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So then he says, okay, he just likes the party. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. As long as he can swing that sword. Uh, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> I have my like, concerns. I'm staying away from this chick. She's not going to back out. There's n it's all temptation over there. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he, got, yeah, right. And then he got, then he got wind of her personality. He was like, "Oh, she's she okay. We're yeah, she's harmless there, <laughs> and, she, and and she can heal things. She's fine. Whatever. She'll be useful. <laughs> Fun. I think he thought you were a threat right off the bat because doesn't worry. Doesn't matter why. Yeah, um, doesn't matter. Yeah, he just he, he definitely thought you were a threat right off the bat. He now knows. He, he now he feels since he's been sworn to protect you. I feel like that fostered some kind of relationship in his head, even if it's one way. <laughs> he's like, all right, he's my ward. I can't let this guy. You know what I mean? Like he feels some kind of. No, well, I mean, like uh, you actively tried to keep on protecting Fawn. Fawn would notice this, as as unobservant as he is, because I just roll shit on perception checks. <laughs> <laughs> that is just I something. Know. So dense that way. <laughs> he is he is like incredibly smart about high level stuff, but the moment you get it, like, wait, how does the real world work? Okay? I'm fine. Okay, good. We're leaving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing suspicious about says new Mims random locked attic. Okay. Oh. Shut up. Up. The amount of natural ones I see on perception and insight checks is actually oh, gross. Right. Right. You don't see. see. Nothing strange about this girl who's at this party who has very clearly been brainwashed by someone. Yeah, as like I actually sussed out as a player. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, and then Maki, Maki was just, uh, you know, the tailor turned. Uh, poison maker in his head he was like oh Maki's probably the most useful like right now but then you cut him off because he got snippy about 10 gold that's so petty of you Will <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. I just want to say real quick Haran I'm so upset that you never were like okay guys shut up I need to go deal with this innkeeper what's we that last session 
Dude, you let me yeah. down, man. You let me down. I was, uh, I was, I, oh, I, I, was, I, was I, forgot, I forgot about it, to be completely honest. Dude, All right. I was sitting there like, please, please, please. Odyssey Sacred burn down this establishment. I wish I, I wish I wrote it. I didn't write it down, so I had forgot about it. But yeah, <laughs> I, 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 it's still time. Don't worry. He's plotting. Can we just take a reprieve here for one second uh, before anyone else continues? And I just want to say the number of says new secrets trademark that you guys have nearly stumbled upon and no one digs deeper or you roll like shit when you try and dig deeper. <laughs> Dude, the attic has not left my head. I I, I, I see that. I, I I have it tucked away until we have, you know, some nice time back in the manor. I have to yeah. do some more digging there because there's something there. Of course there is. I can't, I can't yeah. dig all that deep. Charlotte's nosy, but she's not like, I'm going to uncover all your secrets. She's like, you'll tell me when you want to. Also, yeah, Harrison would Scarlet never do that. Led into like a secret basement room where like there's yep. like, pictures of like tapestries that obviously took years to make. Yep. And she's just like, yep, this is casually cool. Hasn't mentioned it to anybody. This is nope. normal. Nobody asked where she was <laughs> for the full fucking like 16 hours that she was in that room doing nothing but like being Harrison sad. did. Yeah, that's where she was, and she was like. Downstairs. What do you mean by 16 hours being sad? Uh, Charlotte. The, like, we were talking the about angel room with the tapestries. Upon so many says new secrets trademarked, and <laughs> any time y'all try and you either don't probe or you roll like shit to probe, and it's just so funny to me because I've layered them throughout this campaign, and and like you guys just don't. There's there's, There's also a certain out of characterness where like Bree really wants me to do this. Not nah, gonna do it. I do that all. I, <laughs> I want y'all to just not know, but I want to layer it in there. So I don't know what happened to her. Take. So, well. but but the fact was that Charlotte went into a room that had mm -hmm. six or eight tapestries in it that are very obviously very old, and they would have taken decades of dedicated work to finish because of their size and their yep. detail and ornateness. Didn't tell anyone! Yep. No. See, there, that's not a secret to tell. something Charlie would tell people. Yeah, see, there, there's something that I want to piece together, but I don't know one bit of it out of character, so I can't go and piece it together with another piece. Yep. I, I, <laughs> I want Charlotte to be the one that, like, yes, she knows all these big secrets, but she's not gonna, like, purposefully say anything about it. Like, if she's gonna do anything about it, like, they're gonna be talking about an angel tapestry. Like, they're gonna find one somewhere in the land. She's gonna go, hey, that kind of looks like the one in the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah. turn and leave, like, like she said nothing wrong. And then everyone else will be like, wait, wait, what one in the basement? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like... If we all figure it out, you are going to be so shook. I don't know, like what y'all would do because it's just it's so i mean she is ari the god that's why you can't reach her mm, would make mm. sense look at free space i figured it out so... <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. Uh, you know what that's that, that, daddy that that, that that actually that actually falls in line with a uh, breeze uh general yeah. things with like dragon ladies who fall for blacksmiths <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, I will. What, what, what out of your opinion? I'll tell you, she's not Ari, but. <laughs> All right. She's, All right. She's, she's right off. Hmm? So I guess if yeah, we're all... Ariel, not much to go off so far. Why we've taken this child in? I am uh, whatever. She's nineteen. Child. <laughs> child. She's nineteen. Uh, okay. But her mind is older. Sig Siegfried, Siegfried is older, so you know, child in. He's almost like, yeah, you know, uh, So uh, Siegfried yeah. is the boomer of the group. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I know. Yeah, but, kind of. Like, here's the thing. What, again, this is Maki's first impression. Remember, we it, most of these were children. That's why Maki was trying to. Oh, why are we bringing the child? All right, whatever. Okay, fair. That's true. You were lumped in with a bunch of kids as well. Yeah. 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 So that's more that why that ended up like that. <laughs> to be fair, they were all teenagers for the most part. I would say the youngest one is like 13. Yeah. 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 They're, they're mostly yeah. teenagers. They're, they were teenagers, <laughs> yeah. Which are even worse than kids. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can train a kid. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, 
Ariston, of course, started as very much the drunk in Maki's head. Now capable semi drinks at this point. <laughs> semi drinks. But you know, up until he gets drunk <laughs> again, and I'm like, oh, there he goes, being the drunk again. At least he's capable when we need him. When we actually need him, he's capable. That's good. Charlotte, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's all it. I needed to say there for her. <laughs> all right, and it has to change. Okay. Uh, absolutely <laughs> not. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, it's go fuck yourself to seriously go fuck yourself. Go <laughs> oh, fuck yourself, Charlie. More heated. Oh, yeah. Look, nothing's changed since they met each other. There's nothing that can save that relationship. <laughs> this relationship's doomed. Until okay. they actually have to do something together, they will of, not work oh, together yeah. at all. Out of, Out of there. there. When will Spawn figure out that they do it? <sighs> Probably never. He's not that observant. I think. I think even so, if you walked in on them, he still wouldn't. Well, yeah, uh, the only person who <laughs> knows is Siegfried. Yeah, because Siegfried's a bitch. The one time so, I and Maddie were joking I, about it. The the one time, out of character, uh, the the two characters that was their main concept. For mine and Will's relationship between them is that from second one they hated each other and they will always hate each other. Not to be homestuck on main, but but uh, when questions were being asked about, hey, what character relationships would you like to have? I just said Will the word kismesis, which in homestuck means uh, mortal enemy, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, uh, enemy that. Although, yes, they are your enemy, you are the only one allowed to kill them. And it is way more socially accepted to angry fuck someone than it is to, to beat the shit someone. out of your- than, than to beat the shit out of your tailor, every, like, on a weekly basis. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, they actually genuinely hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no compassion there at all. I've been taking that. I've been taking that no. sarcastically this whole time. No. 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 They, act, they actually want to kill each other. Yeah. Yeah. They they actively hate each other and will okay. hurt each other. Like it's yeah. it's there is no love there. There is no kindness in their relationship. When they have to work together, oh. they have to work together, and they both hate it the whole time. They would much rather be beaten. Okay. Out of character, cool, I get that now, but I think still in character, after what Siegfried walked in on, he's still going to believe that it's all <laughs> Honestly, honestly, Fawn would we were... think the same thing. Also, are we alive for you? Oh, uh, we were. All right, that works. There we go. Okay. And and that was the thing that we were prepared for because the, the concept itself is something that uh, is, is not. A thing that happens often in character interactions outside of the people who have read the, the webcomic. Yeah. And because Will and I both have and are only the smidgenest obsessed with it, we were like, we can pull this off very well because we make fun of each other constantly and already yeah. seem like we hate each other. Let's yeah. make characters out of that. Yep. And I love and it, that's it so much. They just, they just genuinely do not like each other and they, never will. They can't like <laughs> each other. I'm sorry to say, there's no saving them. It is destiny that they will never, ever enjoy each other's company for yeah. any reason and other than And we have some other viewer city. questions to get to, so let's finish the one we're on. <laughs> I mean, look, Siegfried, he started out very much as the, all right, bodyguard, perfect. <laughs> He'll be fine. I just don't have to worry about him. Now it's like, I might have to worry about what he does. I'm not going to give him any blame. <laughs> I have concerns. <laughs> I have concerns with him. I'm waiting for Charlotte to start singing and I will always love you when Siegfried walks out in the rain. <laughs> I I actually love I actually love the fact that like Charlotte like absolutely adores Siegfried as a character. Yeah. yeah. And then Fawn Alright, we got another noble to deal with. Great, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see how much of an annoyance he is. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's actually pleasant to have a conversation with. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, yes, the only other smart one here. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, up, 
<laughs> Up until Arison got his ring or whatever that increases intelligence. Bracelet. Yeah. Fawn is technically the second <laughs> smartest person in this part. Yep. Um. Hello, my name is Ramel. I'm the host of this talk session, the player character Fawn within the campaign, and the editor for this video. I would like to thank you for at least watching this if you got this far, but we primarily just did this for ourselves, trying to figure out how we got to this point as well as kind of catch up on what we wanted to ask each other, which wouldn't really make sense to do in character. Well, I found this personally a really fun project to do, and I'd like to do more of these. We'll see in the future how far we get. That being said, thanks for watching this. Part 3 will be on the way. Thanks.